TMNT time! Hello and welcome to another figure review. Today I'm gonna have a look at the first Gokin NT01 Cerebral. This is a figure I had a while ago, I got a while ago, actually when he came out, and I don't know, I never reviewed him, but it just recently came up, and I looked at him and I was like, dude, it's time, it's finally time to give the people a look. If you didn't know, uh, I did review the first Gokin Shredder a while back. Basically, first Gokin is a company that does unlicensed TMNT stuff. That's why it's called Cerebral, Cerebral, or whatever you pronounce that, and not Krang. But that's definitely what this is, a Krang figure. So, we're gonna have a look at the size real quick of this guy. He stands at about 27 centimeters really to the top of his antenna. As far as look goes, they definitely had their idea for a unique design, which obviously is still very reminiscent of the old school cartoon show Krang. And the reason why they're getting away with uh, making unlicensed stuff is because he's a robot. If you if you're in the market of uh, Transformers, you'll know there are a lot of companies that do unlicensed Transformers figures, and for some reason. I don't know what the law is on robots, but apparently they get away with it. I really like the head sculpt. It looks somewhat Neanderthal-like with the them, them weird-ass 80s shades. I mean, it fits so well. Little antenna on top over here, which is soft plastic, which we have a lot of. Same thing for the goggles, and we actually have a mix of a lot of materials. So, soft plastic for this goggles head is soft-ish. As far as the body goes, that is hard plastic. This is soft, once again, connected down here, but you can move it around a little bit. It's not really supposed to. I guess you could take it off if you want. If you want to do custom work, I'm guessing. Uh, the other thing, die cast, shoulder pads. They are straight up metal, which I, I love. I dig that so so much. There is some, some random shading going on, and I think I said the same thing about the first Go Treader. It's random. It is there, it is cool that they have shading, but it's just like, it's like a little bit more of a thick orange going on over here. Just like a big slab. It doesn't look too bad, but again, it's kind of random. Same thing for the elbow over here, and then we're going down to the nice gold, which at first I thought it was metallic as well, but it is just plastic, which is not a bad thing. I said, oh, just plastic. Look at how nice this looks. Very shiny, metallic in contrast to the more muted body type. That's why it really pops and that's why at first glance you think it's die cast but it's just a really well executed metallic paint job and he has some some slots for batteries in the back over here. Unfortunately I don't have the batteries. It's like those flat round batteries. I never have any of those but it's basically to light up the inside of his torso where you have the crank with the window. By the way, the window is just connected with some pegs down there. Let me get you out. Have a look at the detail in there. My god. It's fantastic. This looks so good. So much attention to something so little that you really wouldn't even need that much. And we're going down. Just want to show you the rest of the bot. Some mechanics here and there. And once again, die cast feet, everybody. Good stuff. Okay. Now, the crank itself a soft plastic once again it's a little bit squishy not very nicely connected over here it's one of those uh, it's one of those materials he's sticky it's one of those uh, the plastic the soft plastic when I think it's when it gets hot it gets a little bit sticky so yeah but anyway he looks also great has some I don't know if that's supposed to be blood splatters but uh you know, some red spots, looks overall cool, and he has his little stubby arms on hinges connected to a ball in there, so you have some articulation for the crank dude. And one more thing I forgot, uh, the hands are soft plastic also, but I get to that for the articulation because that's a, it's a very important part. Now for the articulation, I want to start off at the head. It does go back and forth, it doesn't really go side to side, you can rotate it around. But from what I can tell, it's just a long pack in there. It ends on a ball, so you can, you know, move the ball pack on the head itself. And then you basically have a hinge for the long pack. Then we got the shoulder pads, which are just packed in there on balls once again. So you can move that up and down 
a little bit around. I already showed you that this is loose, not really part of the articulation, but just saying if you want to move that around, if you want to move it together, if you want to move it out to the side, you can play a little bit around with that. As for the shoulder, it is on a hinge. It does move up almost 45 degrees. It does get blocked by the shoulder pad. Yeah, it doesn't really go up much more than that. And you can rotate it around as well. Same for the bicep swivel over here. Double hinge in the elbow. And the hand. The hand does disconnect very easily. It's just on the small ball pack. And the thing is, that you can also take this off, I think, if you want to. Yeah, this is removable. And also movable, which is more the important part. But yeah, for the hand, I don't know, it's weird. I don't like it that much because it's soft plastic. We established that. The fingers are soft plastic. The palm itself is not. Well, you just have these small ball packs in there. It moves up and down and it's just, I don't know, it's weird because it's squishy and it disconnects fairly easily sometimes. So I don't know how to think about it. He's not really able to hold anything because of it as well. I mean, it's soft plastic. What are you gonna, what are you gonna hold with that? He doesn't really have anything to hold, just saying, but uh, yeah, I don't know, kind of a weird choice, disconnects easily in the hand, not so great. Then we get to the torso area, you can move him up and down a little bit in the chest over here, does not really move to the side, it looks like it should, but I'm not really getting it to move and I don't want to break him. Torso area down here, the crotch piece rotates all the way around. Then for the legs, you can see the ball joints in there, which are nicely molded. You have some more detail in there, I love that. So it does go out to the side a little bit, not that much, does go up a little bit, and does go to the back just a little bit, because it's basically blocked at where the five part starts over here. Then we got the double hinge knees, those are pretty good. And the die cast foot, which is just on a ball pack. So you can rotate it around, can wiggle it to the side a little bit, and bring it back and forth. So motion wise, it's not the greatest, but it's one of these things. He's a big dude who was not really agile in the show as it is. So, you know, you probably don't want to put him in ninja action pose where he goes around kicking people. That's probably as far as you want to get the foot up, just to kick some turtle butt. As for the accessories, there's not really much to speak of except for these two axe hands, which you can replace with the regular hands. How nicely molded. Very nice metallic paint job, really pops and spiky. Keep away from small channel joint. I think that's why, especially because of these, that's why it said only like, what was it, 13 and up on the box. This stuff is sharp. Look at this. Ow. Heavy <laughs> stuff. And finally, you might be asking with this big size, where does he fit in? Which line does he go best with? Well, let's see. Original TMNT figures, oh my god. Well, you know, it's it's one thing about Krang, he could always change his size, so I'm not really concerned with this that much, but I'm just gonna give you an overlook. Necker Turtles, they just not even go up to half of his size. So it's, you know, it's not really anything that goes along well with the show. It's really like the bigger version where he grows up and depends on how much he grows, he can grow as big as a building, but uh, yeah. NECA, um, Mirage, no, not the Mirage Turtles, we had that one. Ugh. The Cartoon Turtles, and we have a random classic collection, Playmates. TMNT Donatello from the second movie. I guess that fits the most, like the uh, classic Turtles from, uh, from Playmates. And I mean, it still looks good overall with all the other guys. If you ask me, but yeah, Classic Turtles is probably the one that are most in scales and the original Playmates release is just getting dwarfed by this guy. But once again, I'm not really concerned with that. I think it looks cool regardless. The big thing is that he is bigger than them and not having like a Playmates figure that oh, has like the same size like a turtle. Oh, that's so cute. No, he's a big robot and he should be a big robot. And then already he's gonna bring me to the final thoughts, what do I think about this big gorilla looking dude, and he wants to reroll. I love this figure, I mean I had this figure for a while standing around and it has a very special place in my collection. So uh, I mean I love the design, I love that they played around with a little bit with the design, made it a little bit more modern, and I said a little bit like 3,000 times right there. But um, 
the good is the design obviously paint job very nice die cast in the shoulders and the feet very shiny metallic paint job you have a little crank in there it even lights up even though i don't have any batteries i'm sorry about that and uh yeah the bed is i don't like soft plastic hands it's a bit weird it's a bit wonky you do get some some good posing and since he doesn't even doesn't even have anything to hold i guess it's all right the articulation is also somewhat limited down here at the torso it really gets kind of eh. But once again he's not really the most action posing dude recommended 100 percent if you can still find him i think he kind of shot up in price recently i just I saw like a list the other day of like top 10 most expensive and he was on and I was like, okay, what? So uh, yeah, good luck hunting guys and uh, as usual, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget, if you enjoyed this review, feel free to hit it up with a like and subscribe to the channel so you can stay tuned for more figure reviews, gameplay stuff and whatever. Krang wants. And T-Zero wants a reroll.